with us in the studio and live for a featured guest conversation and returning to the show longtime media friend John Bradshaw. John is an acclaimed number one New York Times best-selling author whose books include Bradshaw and the Family, Healing the Shame that Binds You, Homecoming, and Creating Love. John facilitates lectures and workshops nationally and hosted one of the most popular TV series highlighting his work with the family, uh, seven different series that John did. And as always, it's just a pleasure to have you not only on the mic, but here in the studio and having a chance to hang out. It's been really great. It really has been. What a, what a beautiful place you have here. Well, thanks. As I may have mentioned to you, I loved Creating Love, uh, the last book, but this newest one, uh, Reclaiming Virtue, How Can We Develop the Moral Intelligence to Do the Right Thing at the Right Time for the Right Reason, is, I, I, I think it's a real masterpiece. Now, I know a lot went into this. How many years About would you say? seven years. Seven years into this book. And, uh, you know, not all the time, but you become like a recalcitrant kid sometimes. You won't want to do your homework. And, uh, but, yeah, I, uh, it's, uh, you know, I have a doctorate in theology, and I have a master's degree in philosophy and psychology, but most of my work has been on dysfunctional families and healing the shame that binds you. And uh, I, I get to use my philosophy and theology in this book and also deal with that the issue of my own being brought up in a rigid Catholic family, mm -hmm. studying to be a Catholic priest for almost 10 years, and continually wondering why that I either was the best best or the best worst. Mm -hmm. That, you know, I either, I was one extreme or the other. I was in brothels at, in the eighth grade. I had a terrible alcoholic adolescence. I go into the monastery at 21. So, 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 so are you saying you kind of bounce back and forth from virtue to uh, non-virtue? Oh, to, you know? to absolute the other extreme. Uh -huh. It was one extreme or the other. Uh, when I went to the seminary, I can remember I would kneel for four hours without moving a muscle, and uh, they thought they had some kind of saint coming in there. And for about three years, I lived this rigid, austere life. Uh, and then just slowly, gradually went back to sneaking in and drinking. And I am a genetic alcoholic. My father was alcoholic. My grandmother was alcoholic. And I'm 45 years recovered. And a lot of the work that I do, the earlier books, have been on dysfunctional families, especially alcoholic families, where you have a lot of incest. You have a lot of physical abuse in those families. All right, let's get into uh, Reclaiming Virtue. I, I, I want to read right from the jacket first, and I marked off some other spots for reading and uh, getting your commentary. Uh, it says that you've written this book for the millions of decent, caring people who are struggling every day with painful choices, who are appalled as he is, that's you, by the greed and shamelessness that plague our society and who long for guidance for themselves and their children in an increasingly complex world. Is the only solution a return to an oppressive rules-based morality or an idealized past? John says no. Instead, he shows that each of us has what he calls an inborn moral intelligence and inner guidance system that can lead us if we know how to cultivate it in in ourselves and others out of this mess. Um, so, so let's start with those words, okay? Um, when you talk about moral intelligence, what is that? Well, I was very concerned when uh, um, a book came out in 1984 from Harvard, Harold Gardner, uh, called Frames, and it was on multiple intelligences. It was a very important book, and to my mind, because I'd been a high school teacher, university professor, and I'd seen people that were brilliant, but didn't get the you know they were the topics that they were being taught were just too much for them. Uh, he Gardner talks about moral intelligence, uh -huh. uh, but he dismisses it as a candidate intelligence, although he's not rigid in any way. But I took his <clears throat> his criteria for a mar you know for a candidate intelligence for example if a part of the brain is damaged you lose that intelligence and Ant Antonio Damasio has written a book called Descartes error 
and it's about a man who is damaged in the orbital frontal lobe of the non-dominant hemisphere. This guy is brilliant in math, uh, but he can't feel, hmm. and he can't make a choice. So if you can't make a choice, you can't make a moral decision. And so that was one of the pieces I used. I used Matt Ridley's book, The Origin of Virtue, a whole biological uh, piece on cooperation, the instinct for cooperation. I, I have a story in there of six rhesus monkeys that are eating, and they pull a chain and they eat, and they put a seventh monkey in the cage, and when it pulls the chain, it gets shocked terribly. Well, five, four of the monkeys go to other chains. Mm -hmm. One of the monkeys uh, abstains for five days. The second monkey abstains for 12 days. Like, they're going, I don't want to hurt my bro. And uh -huh. one of them's willing to starve lest he inflict pain on his fellow rhesus monkey. So, so is that what virtue means in this, uh, in this case, that you look past yourself to every act that you do and how it relates to uh, your friends, your family, and you have to be virtuous or compassionate in your virtue with that? Well, certainly it's about caring for others. Uh, Jonathan Haidt, an anthropologist, studied all the cultures, what the ancients used to call sendericis. Mm -hmm. And what that meant was that wherever you find a culture, there's taboos. Well, what does that mean? It means they think something's wrong and something's right. Uh, so uh, in the study of that, he came up with what I would call the five colors of moral intelligence. One is harm no one. Mm -hmm. One is uh, don't cheat and punish cheaters. Uh, one is uh, respect authority. You know, when Sinead O'Connor to tore up the picture of the Pope, they booed her off the stage at her next conference, and I know those weren't devout Catholics that were booing her off the stage. And then one of them is be loyal to your family. I mean, that's a great one, but it also creates that us in them. And the last one is purity. And I asked the question is, who do you think is the purest, Norman Borlong or Mother Teresa? And, you know, everyone will go, Mother Teresa. Well, Norman Borlong is the guy that founded the Green Revolution and has probably saved a billion people's lives. But Mother Teresa's in her white gown. And so purity, that there's a certain point where a, com a comedian can just go off the wall, and it's too much. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. you, you, you also told a story, and I don't know whether it was in the book or in one of the talks that you did, about uh, the, the trolley car uh, situation, which is another example. You, we got two minutes here. to. Well, that's in the book, and yeah. that's from Philippa Foote, who's yeah. a very well-known moralist. It's about a trolley car that's out of control. If you, And the question is, if you press a button or pull a lever, the trolley will go on another track. It will kill one person who's working on the track but it will save five people's lives. She put it on the internet, got 200,000 response, 98% say pull the, pull the lever. Then she said, if you're standing there and you see the trolley out of control, would you push an old man on the track? You know, and I'm thinking to myself being 76. Uh, uh, <laughs> but more than that, uh, you know, I mean, you could make it an old lady who's infirm, sort of like Dostoevsky's guy thinking, I can kill this guy, he's not important. And, 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 and it will, you could throw them on the track and you will save five people's lives. 98% answered no, you can't do that. That's not moral. All and right. these were octogenarians, teenagers, Muslims, Catholics, uh, uh, Jews. Uh, men, women, and so what's the deal? You're yeah. killing five, we're saving five people and killing one. Why is it that in one case, most people think it's moral to do, mm -hmm. and the other case, they say no? Well, we can ponder that here for a minute and then take our first break. Uh, John Bradshaw, featured guest in the studio, number one New York Times bestselling author with a number of books. And we are into the newest one called Reclaiming Virtue. We'll be back in the series.